from uh, other cities, welcome to New York. Uh, welcome to the Dream Conference and welcome to the Regulatory Genomics and Systems Genomics ISCB Recom with Dream Challenges Conference. So I am uh, Gustavo Stolovitsky and I am uh, the, the Dream uh, Chair and uh, the Dream Conference co uh, Chair. Pablo is the Chair of the Dream Conference and and he's going to speak in a, in a little bit. So do you want to say something to welcome? No, just uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for being uh, so early. We were scared to be alone, Gustavo and me here. So it's great yeah. to have you here. Thank you. Okay, great. So we'll, we'll start with a few uh, things as usually we do with the dream conferences. Um, I'd like to go through a little bit of a summary of what happened the past year. Uh, with DREAM, there was a lot of activity. Some, some of it um, is clear to some of you because you are participating in some of the challenges, but some of it may not be. For those of you who, need, um, who are um, um, in need of Wi-Fi, please uh, follow these instructions. Um, read fast uh, so that we can go to the other, other presentation. Okay. Okay, so as I said before, this is the uh, 11th re um, Systems Biology and Regulatory Genomics with Dream Challenges Conference. We started many years ago, first in Boston, then New York, then Barcelona, San Francisco, Toronto, then we went to San Francisco again, Phoenix. New York, and finally today we are uh, again in New York. Um, our meeting was um, organized, it's, it's a com combination meeting as you know. Hopefully some of you will stay uh, tomorrow and the day after when uh, we will have great, great um, uh, keynote speakers. Our scientific program chairs were uh, Gre Gregoire Altan Bonnet, uh, Richard Bono, Christina Leslie, Pablo Mayer, Sorab Sinha and Ite Yanai, and our meeting logistics was uh, wonderfully coordinated by Bell Hanson and, um, and Elise Blaze. Uh, this is the, the list of our uh, keynote speakers. We had 150 posters, 40 oral communications, about 3,000 registrants for, for Dream and for, for Dream Challenges, and um, 10 keynote speakers, which are these. In the Dream Conference, we have uh, we're lucky that um, um, uh, Daphne Kohler is is she here already or not? No, yes, she, she's here. Okay, and um, and Ross Kagan uh, will be our keynote speakers. We also have very notable speakers, as panelists, and um, and uh, f um, uh, Nikolaus Rajowski who also came uh, for uh, discussing the single cell transcriptomics challenge. These are the challenges that happened during the year. Um, these challenges had uh, 1,200 registrants. The single cell transcriptomics challenge, would uh, we will discuss in the afternoon as we will the multi-targeting drug dream challenge uh, there are a couple of other challenges going on and uh, almost finished. IDG Dream Drug Kinase Binding Prediction Challenge is going very well. And the, and the Tumor the Convolution uh, Dream Challenge that if you haven't go and pre-register, this is promising to be a very nice challenge. We will discuss it later this, uh, this morning. As, usually, uh, uh, as usual, we uh, try to be you know, good um, citizens and uh, help uh, people who are trying to write grants, especially because uh, the dream challenges are uh, a very good mechanism for outreach. And so we have participated in one way or another, maybe directly or not, in um, different challenges. And we try to, um, you know, either provide letters of support or be more hands-on uh, designing challenges or designing uh, a, a dream-specific aim in different uh, NIH, NSF, or foundation um, uh, grants. So don't be shy if you are going to write your grants and if you think that the dream challenge would be a nice way to make your data available, 
reach out to us. We cannot promise that we will um, do the challenge. It depends on whether it's um, aligned with our strategies in DREAM, but, um, but we will do our, our best to help you. Um, we had, let me see if I can click, oh, I think, how, how do I click here, uh, this, oh, here, I, I found it. I don't know whether you guys have seen it, but we have this beautiful um, um, movie. I don't know whether um, we have a sound a little bit. Some of, some of you will find yourself here. This, this movie is nice because it's a little corny, the music, I know, but you know, this is... Um, It's nice because it shows a little bit what we are about, you know, what kinds of uh, questions we ask, um, you know, why we, we, how we are different from other uh, um, challenge platforms like, for example, Kaggle or, uh, you know, the fact that we are very much uh, trying to foster uh, collaborative work. Um, trying to be relevant and impactful in, uh, in biomedical sciences, machine learning and big data. So we crowdsource this, 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 this movie with many of you participating. These are the different um, topics that we have uh, dealt with in the past years. Breast cancer, Parkinson's, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer. <clears throat> and this is the, the concept of collaborative work, teamwork, uh, helping uh, junior colleagues. Thank you, Elise Base, uh, for creating this movie and having the idea for uh, for doing it this way. Very good. Well. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so we published a number of papers during 2018, uh, not necessarily the organizers, but some of you using our, uh, our data, so this is some of, of them. Uh, one was a, an R package for the survival uh, and time to event in the prostate cancer challenge uh, by the team that won the, that uh, particular challenge. Um, some of the somatic mutation calling challenge papers uh, were out. Uh, ways to do um, data sharing, even when the data is not um, uh, intended to be shared uh, by using Docker containers, as some of you know. Um, some, uh, and some, we know that we have been slow in publishing some of the challenge papers. Um, we are trying to be a little bit more prompt and putting everything uh, as far as, as fast as we can and as feasible uh, in, in the bioarchives. These are some of the papers that have been published in the bioarchive before they uh, are published. And so once the papers are published in the bioarchive, uh, all the participants are able to publish their own papers. Then um, a couple of the prostate cancer papers receive a, a good um, a recognition. For example, the prostate cancer dream challenge 
paper published in um, Journal of Clinical Oncology, Clinical Cancer Informatics, was selected as one of the top three papers by the IMEA, Institute for Medical Informatics, uh, uh, and so it was a good recognition. We also have, if you haven't gone, and, and the, um, the um, uh, if you go here, tinyurl.com dream papers, we have a Google Scholar page that Jim Costello created, and you can see last year we have an H index of 24. This is all the papers that Dream uh, is involved in. And uh, this year we have uh, 32 H factors. So like we are uh, an uh, up and coming uh, young uh, scientist. If, you, if some of you are, are like uh, come from a math uh, field, you know that group, uh, Bourbaki, that were a group of people, uh, mathematicians publishing together and working together. So this is a little bit like that. This is our collective production. Uh, there was some media attention. Some of our best performers like to put uh, press releases or some people um, in the media ask about dream challenges and, and, and colleagues uh, answer. And um, now I'm going to pass on to uh, Pablo for him to present a little bit. I just want to mention that uh, some of the conference that we attended uh, or participated in one way or another in 2019, one was the ISMB special session uh, on advancing computing biology, computational biology through critical assessments. And our colleague, uh, Jim Costello, went there and uh, represented DREAM. But it was a very interesting opportunity to share with other colleagues that are doing similar work. And, uh, and then... Thanks, Thank Gustavo. Yeah. yeah, so we also organized a satellite, satellite session uh, in Paris in April uh, together with Recom. And uh, the idea was that we want to try to expand more territory because we're uh, very much, uh, I guess, uh, an American centered institution. So it was great to go to Paris to organize uh, two whole days of a workshop with uh, 50 people attended together with this um, uh, a little bit different collective than us called Epidemium. Uh, and it was interesting to see the differences between, uh, I guess, the two collectives because uh, dream challenges have the characteristic of definitely being very organized into how we do challenges, how we um, get together to send solutions, etc. Epidemium was a little bit more hippie than us in a sense because they kind of get together, have lunch and decide what they're going to work on and try to find the data and then decide what's a good problem. So it's, it's a much more, uh, I guess, in situ uh, collaborative uh, um, project, which I guess being in the center of Paris uh, helps. Um, but it, so it was very interesting. We had a few keynotes, uh, Rudy Abersol, John Malt, uh, David Crail from basically the, all, the, all the different uh, other types of crowdsourcing competitions that are really more cousins uh, of Dream. And finally, Nikola Rajevsky also gave a keynote uh, on the single cell uh, uh, sequencing that basically led to the challenge that, that uh, I led in the past few months. Uh, we think that was, you know, basically a success. So it's going to happen again uh, now back into um, U.S. territory. So it will happen in, in Washington D.C. in in May, and uh, we're kind of putting together also a nice program. So it's a little bit more focused workshop than the Dream Conference. So in case you're interested, just um, you know, you can go there. So one of the things I wanted to share, uh, you know, now that I have been a few years. Uh, as a dream director and, and now uh, co-chairing the conference is, what does it really take to make a challenge? Maybe all of you, uh, you know, just participate and don't have the notion of what it really takes. And I want to take an, as an example, the single cell challenge that I organized this year. And so, you know, we kind of start discussing this uh, formally on July, uh, you know, end of July. Uh, we decided we really wanted to do it because, um, it was an interesting challenge, and also um, we needed, we wanted to have results for, for this conference. This is also the first year that, inspired by uh, CAMDA, we are revealing the best performers and the uh, scoring and uh, the rankings of this challenge uh, here. Uh, so we launched the challenge on September 4th, then we do a webinar, then the leaderboard, uh, end of October, the challenge closed November 21st. People send, uh, got their invitations just after that to come on December 8th. So as you can see, it was a very tight schedule. 
just four months and a half from deciding that we were going to do it to actually having the best performers here. So uh, probably since uh, uh, Gustavo stopped doing the challenges all by himself, um, this is the, probably the fastest challenge that we've done. Um, Gustavo, if you don't know, used to organize a conference by himself and score and do everything. So, you know, it's, it's not a complaint, but it's just saying that, you know, it takes a lot of work. Uh, in another type of metric, you know, I sent uh, 120 organizational emails, 150 uh, technical emails, 150 emails for score implementation, and 500 emails about 35 threads in the forum when people were asking questions. So that's about 1,000 emails uh, just for this challenge. And, you know, this is fine. I guess we're used to emails. The problem is when you get one email that just tells you that what you're doing is horrible and 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 that it's a crap and that you know you you should be much more careful so i just wanted to give a, a size of the type of the work it is and the number of people that you are that are um that depend on the work you're doing uh just so that when people send emails right this is not twitter i mean we're a we're a civilized uh, organization so we try to always keep it civilized uh, and that's how we try to do it so we hope that uh, every single participant does that too uh, it's in generally the case, but you know the the point zero one percent makes a difference. So um, it was a great success. This challenge, uh, I will talk a little bit more later about it. But we had uh, you know three hundred eighty registered teams and thirty four submissions, and um, so this is this was just an example I wanted to say. The other thing I want to say also as an experience that has been um, really frustrating is. Um, trying to get a, a grant for running these challenges because you can you could ask you know how are these challenges run i mean who 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 funds this and sometimes when i go to places and to uh you know share the knowledge of dream they ask okay but how is this done we need funding the first thing they ask is it's fine to get together and be a community but how do you fund my time how do i pay for a postdoc etc right so i have to say that dream has been really running on thin air in a sense uh, it's just, you know, we've been running on funds that are given challenge to challenge, etc. So we try to uh, write a grant, uh, U24, to try to get, you know, funding for the whole project. And that has been difficult. We've sent basically three times a grant, and we, get, uh, we basically got more or less the same scores, um, also, although we tried to be better, which were not bad scores. I mean, I'm not going to reveal the scores. But basically, the types of um, um, comments we get are that Dream Challenges are not a new idea. Well, sure, okay, we've been around 10 years, but every challenge is different, and every challenge, in, in my view, is innovative. So, you know, how do you answer a comment like that? Not all problems can be translated to a dream challenge. Well, of course, right? I mean, <laughs> but certain ones can and can have a lot of impact. Um, the application doesn't make the case for relative effectiveness of using dream projects as compared to individual evaluators who have greater domain specific knowledge and have the ability to generate greater insights into the performance of using their own. Okay, so they don't like crowdsourcing. Uh, lack of comparison of the proposed platform with others. We always talk about the other platforms and I think we really try to include them. Um, this is mostly logical next steps rather than a leap of innovation. So basically, you know, they think we're not innovative enough, uh, which is, really hard because I think every challenge is innovative and so how do you put that into an application, right? Anyway, I just want to share maybe these two couple of slides where my 0.01% frustration with organizing this, all the rest is pleasure, but I want to share that because if you guys have ideas, right, into how to uh, help us make us better, how to write a convincing grant that could just, you know, help uh, Dream take off to Mars, um, uh, it, would be, it would be really great. So I thank you for that. Um, and so, um, thank you, Pablo. So, um, thank you to many of you, to um, the Dream Directors, many of um, of whom are here. Um, you know, uh, we we work. Uh, the organization of Dream is based on um, some of pe some people that give their time voluntarily, and, um, and uh, we count among them Bruce Hoff, Jim Costello, Julio Sáez Rodriguez, Justin Guiné. Lara Mangravit, Laura Heiser, Pablo Meyer, Paul Boutros, and other people that also uh, volunteer their time. But these are our core, um, you know, brain of, of dream. Um, we have um, Elise Blaze and Julie Bletz who are 
really uh, core to uh, keeping us sound. And of course, many of the challenge organizers and participants. For this conference, we had um, NYU supporting us, uh, MSK and IBM Research. And of course, uh, we are Dream and Sage Bioneurs are uh, joined at, uh, co conjoined at, at the hip, as uh, Stephen Friend used to say. Okay. Here is the conference, and uh, we are um, getting a little bit late, but the, in the morning we have this um, number of uh, papers that were submitted and uh, were chosen amongst the submissions. Then we have our first um, keynote speaker, Daphne Kohler, and uh, we look forward to uh, her talk. In the um, um, second session, we are going to discuss many of the challenges that are in, the, in preparation and um, uh, Later this afternoon, we have our second uh, keynote speaker, Ross Kagan, who's going to tell us how he's doing um, avatars of hu human cancers uh, in, in flies, in Drosophila. So he has personalized avatars in the fly, and, and, and uh, from the, the biology that he learned from that, he was inspired to create a challenge that we'll discuss later, and then Finally, the uh, single cell transcriptomics challenge. So this is our in introduction. So I pass now the baton to, um, to Pablo, who's going to chair the first session.